Most people get their kicks from watching sports or going to the movies. Scientists at NASA apparently get theirs from simulating the world getting hit by giant asteroids and seeing how much trouble we'd be in. It turns out the answer is a lot. Here's what you need to know. If an Earth-bound asteroid was seen with only six months warning, a group of scientists from NASA and other space agencies has concluded that no one could do anything to stop it hitting the planet, according to Business Insider. Their simulation, which played out online from April 26th to April 28th, according to Space.com, found that there isn't a spacecraft capable of getting off the ground and flying up to disrupt the asteroid's trajectory in that amount of time. Having used a scenario where an asteroid was spotted 35 million miles from Earth, Paul Chodas, manager of the NASA's Center for Near-Earth Object Studies, told Business Insider that we would need a minimum of five years to stop any threat. However, MIT astronomer Richard Binzel concluded we would need at least 10 years in order to study aspects of the asteroid such as its size, its path around the Sun, and what it's made up of. Legislation created in 2005 directed NASA to find 90% of near-Earth objects 140 meters or larger by 2021. However, according to Business Insider, it has currently only tracked 40%. In an ideal scenario, any asteroid would be dealt with in one of three ways. An explosive device could be detonated to break it into smaller chunks, lasers could be used to vaporize it, or a spacecraft could be sent to hit and change its trajectory. Each of these options, though, would take years to implement. So, there you go. If you didn't already feel miserable enough about the state of the world, NASA has invented an additional hypothetical doomsday scenario for you to add to the pile. We can all come up with ways that won't work to stop an asteroid, guys. For instance, putting up a giant umbrella probably wouldn't work either. And neither would singing Imagine to it. Although, obviously, that wouldn't stop celebrities from giving it a go. But you're NASA, so please tell all us dummies some ways that will work next time. Thanks. And of course, asteroids aren't the only thing that could be coming to kill you sometime soon. Let's see, 2020 so far. Huge bushfires down under where at least 1 billion animals died? Check. Global pandemic? Check. Large plague of locusts threatening food security in East Africa? Check. Hundreds of giant Asian killer hornets appear for the first time ever in the Northwest US ready to kill honeybees? Check. Wait, what? We wish we were kidding. Just as the world is trying its best to keep its cool in the midst of a pandemic, giant murdering hornets never before seen in American territory are coming out of hibernation. This is what we know. Last December, the Washington State Department of Agriculture confirmed two reports of Asian giant hornets in Blaine, Washington. Reuters reports that two more unconfirmed sightings were reported in Custer, Washington. These killer hornets are now coming out of winter hibernation. Native to Southeast Asia, China, and Taiwan, Asian giant hornets can measure between 1.5 to 2 inches or 3.8 to 25 centimeters in length. Vespa mandarinia, also known as murder hornets, have stingers that deliver venom to their victims and mandibles capable of decapitating bees. According to the WSU Insider, the Asian giant hornet queen wakes from hibernation in April, finds nourishment and then looks for a place to establish a colony that will later go out to bring back food. The bee population in the United States is most threatened by these hornets from late summer to early fall. While they hunt for food for their next queens, the hornets will decapitate honeybees and eat the bees' larvae and pupae. Well, you might be thinking, isn't this just nature? The circle of life, so to speak? Nope, not really. First off, we don't know how these hornets made it to the U.S but they have never been found in the country before, so this new species is an invader and definitely a threat to beekeepers. Still not feeling this pertains to you? A threat to bees means a threat to human food production. We need bees in order for many key crops to be pollinated. According to the United States Department of Agriculture, more than a third of all American crop production requires insects to help pollinate, and the primary pollinator is, you guessed it, honey bee colonies. So what can you do? Well, if you live in the States, keep an eye out for these murderous buggers and call authorities if you're unlucky enough to spot one. But in your quest to take down the murder hornet invasion, please be aware of their painful toxin-ridden sting. Oh, and if you're allergic to bees, then definitely stay away because their sting could easily cause a severe anaphylactic shock and even, well, death. Florida has finally found a venomous new animal that is new, but not new in the sense that it's an invasive species that's devastating the local ecosystem. Here are the details. 
The Miami Herald reports that scientists have found a new species of venomous spider in Miami that looks like a small, shiny black tarantula. It's called the Pine Rockland Trapdoor Spider, and it is indeed a relative of the tarantula. The new spider was first found on the grounds of Zoo Miami. With legs extended, the female can measure up to 7 centimeters wide. This is a trapdoor spider, meaning it lives in a burrow with a hinged cover, like a trapdoor, to hide from predators and ambush unlucky prey. Luckily, the spider's bite is only as painful as a bee's sting to humans. The spiders themselves can be eaten by birds and they can be targeted by wasps who inject wasp eggs into them, which would later hatch as larvas and then devour the spider from the inside. However, the biggest danger to the arachnid is the loss of its habitat. The first specimen was found in critically endangered Pine Rockland forest surrounding Zoo Miami. It is likely that this species is limited to the small area of threatened habitat, which means it could be threatened itself. Although many people would be glad that this scary and venomous cousin of the tarantula is probably heading for extinction, scientists are already making plans to try and save this rare species. What sounds like the absolute worst idea you could ever come up with? Getting a large face tattoo the day before the interview for your dream job? Replying to all of your spam emails with the phrase, Yes please, that sounds great. How about deliberately releasing a plague of mosquitoes down in Florida? We don't know about the first two, but the US Environmental Protection Agency has given the go-ahead for the mosquitoes. Here's what they're thinking. Biotech company Oxitec will this week begin controversially releasing half a billion gene-hacked mosquitoes along the Florida Keys in an experiment designed to kill off the island's pest population according to Futurism. The experiment will target the mosquito species Aedes aegypti, which makes up between 2% and 4% of the mosquito population in the area, but is associated with almost all cases of mosquito-borne illnesses such as dengue and Zika. According to a statement released on the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's website, scientists have inserted a gene called OX5034 exclusively into male mosquitoes, which don't bite humans. They say the males will breed with wild females, which do. The OX5034 gene kills off female Aedes aegypti mosquitoes before they enter adulthood and therefore steadily reduces the overall population. The move comes as mosquitoes native to Florida are increasingly resistant to existing insecticide controls, according to Undark. However, the experiment has caused controversy across the Florida Keys area, with Futurism reporting many residents concerned with a lack of transparency. Potential issues with the experiment are numerous. In a previous trial in Brazil, Oxitec acknowledged that some second-generation female mosquitoes with a similar gene, OX513A, had survived into adulthood, leading to suggestions that a new genetic hybrid could survive in the wild. Futurism also points out that there were no caged trials before the actual release of the mosquitoes, leading to accusations from environmental group Friends of the Earth that not enough evidence is in place before the start of the Florida trial. Scientists found that warm water is eating away the pillars under Antarctica's so-called Doomsday Glacier at an alarming rate. This could cause the massive glacier to collapse into the ocean. Science Magazine reports that Antarctica's Doomsday Glacier is melting faster than expected and could raise global sea levels by up to 65 centimeters. With a surface area the size of Britain and a depth of up to 4 kilometers, Thwaites Glacier is called Doomsday Glacier because of its projected impact on the rise of sea levels. Data was collected by the uncrewed submarine RAN that made its way under the glacier. The drone submarine found that currents of warm water are finding their way deep into the ocean under the ice shelf. The fact that so much warm water is finding its way to the base of the glacier is alarming glaciologists. That's because the warm water is melting away the pillars at the landward side on which the glacier is anchored. The fear is that, if the ice pillars collapse, large areas of ice would break off into the ocean, causing the ice to melt faster and causing more ice to flow into the ocean from the land-based part of the glacier. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.